Okay, so vaping, um, it's one of those things in the smoke-free community, I reckon um, there's kind of two camps. And uh, over the last year, you've heard a lot in the media and there's the for and the against. And if you go to lots of these seminars like I do, like, it gets quite heated. That's why I like going. I'm like, right, when are they going to bring up the vaping? Um, and I would have definitely a year ago been in camp, um, no, popcorn lung, all of this sounds dreadful. Um, but do you know what? We're not going to hit the 2025 goal. Fact. It's not, it's not going to happen. I know we say, oh, we're on track. No, we're not on track at all. They reckon we're going to hit it in 2060 if we keep doing what we're doing. Um, and the amount of deaths between that time will be massive. Okay? So I'm actually, after the new research that's come from the UK, beginning to change how I feel about the vaping. I mean, I take on board everything. And I think the key with this is the weaning off process. So it's not a substitute. It's not I now vape. It's like NRT, and a lot of you, we, we have a written programme for weaning off NRT um, in our clinic, because a lot, 3% of the com um, this country are addicted to the products, to the gum and the lozenges, and I can see people nodding. Okay, and there's no evidence-based research that says that that's bad for you. But we don't know that with vaping, so therefore it's really, really important that we have some kind of time frame and guidelines around, okay, so you're vaping, you've quit smoking, now let's wean you down the different levels if you're using nicotine to get you off vaping. And that might be six months a year, and we don't know what that looks like. But if that means that you're going to quit smoking for life, I'm all up for it, because I'm about getting you quit smoking. Okay, so that's just where I am. I'll shut up for a bit now. Okay, so I'm going to show you a video. Ooh. Um, this is from the vape, com vape community, and like we said, there are loads of these online, but I thought this woman was very articulate and she does it quite well. Hi, I'm Christina from Vape Club. Welcome to our beginner's guide to take you step by step through all the basics to help you make the switch to vaping. Vaping devices can seem daunting at first, but are really quite simple once you understand a few basics. Electronic cigarettes and vaping devices are essentially the same thing and can be broken down into two main components. The first being the power unit, which houses the battery, and the second being the tank, which holds and vaporises the e-liquid. All vaping devices work using the same principle. Inside the tank, which holds the e-liquid, is the atomizer. The atomizer contains a wire wrapped around some sort of wicking material and is referred to as a coil. The wick soaks up the e-liquid and draws it into the coil. When activated, the coil heats up and vaporises the e-liquid. The first generation of vaping devices are known as cigalikes because they look very similar to a real cigarette. They consist of a small lithium battery and a non-refillable tank which contains the e-liquid and is often referred to as a cartomizer. As the technology evolved to meet the demand for high performance, the look and feel of these devices changed notably. The latest generation of devices offers a highly customizable and far superior vaping experience. Starting with the most basic vaping devices in the market, you have things like the Ego Style Kits. These feature a small battery with an activation button and a basic refillable tank. Virtually all starter kits will come with a USB charger and options for a wall adapter. Do make sure that you use the correct USB charger and wall adapter to charge all of your vaping devices and if in doubt do check your user manual. The larger battery lasts you longer. The Sigalikes tend to typically last around 200 puffs and the Ego batteries can last 600 puffs and up depending on the size of the battery that you choose. For the typical vapor that can mean anywhere between 4 and 10 hours of vaping. The batteries will come in a variety of sizes ranging from around 400 milliamps up to about 1300. The higher the milliamp number, the more charge your battery will hold and the longer it will last. But the larger capacity batteries are also larger in size, so that's something to bear in mind when considering the size of your setup. The second major advantage is the refillable tank with its much improved atomizer. It offers much better vapour production and enhanced flavour. The larger capacity of around 1.6mm means that the typical vapor can use the device all day without running out of e-liquid. These tanks are called clearomizers because, well, they're clear and they allow you to see how much e-liquid you've got left. The Sigalikes offer a very limited range of flavors and nicotine strengths, but the range of e-liquids available for the refillable tanks is far greater, but we'll cover e-liquids in a different video. The basic clearomizers are disposable. They can last anywhere between about two to six weeks before the performance of the coil starts to deteriorate, so you'll need to replace the tank. 
The basic kits are a great way for you to get into vaping. They're really inexpensive and they do a much better job than the Sigalikes. But you may find that you still want more performance. Some people prefer stronger throat hits or more airflow, so you might be more interested in something more advanced. The more advanced batteries allow you to control the power output. Higher power output means the coil gets hotter. This has an effect on the temperature, the vapour production, the throat hit and the flavour. So I'll demonstrate the difference between the low power and the higher power. So right now we're at 7 watts. And this is at 30 watts. I'm getting a hell of a lot more vapour production as well as much better flavour. Because everybody's taste is individual, people prefer vaping different flavours at different temperatures. The power output is normally altered by controlling either the voltage or the wattage using a mechanical dial or the digital display. The long and short of it is, the variable wattage provides a slightly easier and more consistent vaping experience. However, due to the more complex chips used, the variable wattage devices do tend to be slightly more expensive than the variable voltage devices, so this is something to keep in mind when choosing your setup. The more advanced tanks offer a replaceable atomizer, so instead of disposing of the whole thing, you simply unscrew the coil and replace it. They are also made of more durable materials, often stainless steel with Pyrex glass. This not only makes them last longer, but it also gives you a much better flavour production. The continued development of the tanks also allowed for even more innovative features, such as the larger capacity, the rotatable drip tip, and the adjustable airflow controls. So the right setup for you will be determined by a balance of how much money you might be prepared to spend to switch from tobacco and the level of performance that you might need to help keep your cravings at bay. Some people enjoy the endless customization options that vaping offers, whilst others just prefer a simple plug and go system. So in terms of performance, you're far better going for something with a variable power output and if your budget permits for it, ideally something with a variable wattage. Because the tank is so important to vapour production and flavour, we do recommend that you go for something with a Pyrex tank and adjustable airflow, but do make sure that you choose one that's compatible with your battery of course. And bear in mind that the majority of the products are interchangeable, so once you've got yourself a basic setup, you can gradually upgrade it with new batteries and tanks until you find that setup that works for you. So I hope this video has given you a great insight into the world of vaping, and perhaps made it seem a little less overwhelming. Whatever setup you do choose, good luck and welcome to the Vape Club. Overwhelming? <laughs> Crikey! Right, this is going to give you a laugh. So the history of vape. So you've heard ends, e-cigarettes, vaporizers, you name it. They're all, they are all exactly the same thing. But they're called different things because of generations. So there's first generation, which were the ones that he likes that look like this, okay? The first one I got for my training kit was quite a few years ago, the green smoke, and I got it, they wouldn't let me buy them here then, so I had to get it imported from America. And you plug it in with a USB to charge it up, and the end goes green, and it's like, it's hilarious. <laughs> so, I'm gonna give you some demo. Now, is there anyone in the room that objects to me doing this and don't want to be in the room? Are you gonna make bait? Yeah. Okay, I'm not doing it yet. No, 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 that's fine. And that's why, why I wanted to ask, because I want to do an actual hands-on demo, but everyone has a right to leave the room. Okay, so nothing major is going to come out of this one, because um, I'm going to show you the difference in how far they've come in the last few years. So like I said, this one's a disposable one, so it's about the equivalent of a 20-pack a day. And this one's a rechargeable one, so if I just show you, it's got no nicotine in, by the way. All of these products are nicotine free. I'll just wait till you. Okay. Well, can you see? Yeah. It's no biggie, it's not like a big deal, but it looked like a cigarette, but kind of doesn't. But initially, some people like this, actually liked it. Okay. I think they feel a bit funny. And when I do it, because I'm an ex smoker, I'm like, ooh, feels weird. Do you get a hit? You know how um, when no. I've taken blood from opiate addicts, oh, got a hit, doctor. Ooh, ooh. No, no, because there's no nicotine, and the nicotine no, is neither there. is there in a syringe pulling blood. Oh, really? Out. No, I definitely don't. So many times. No, okay. really. A psychological hit. Yeah, interesting. A so this one, this is a second generation. All right, so they all come in 
different colours and packaging and blah, blah, blah. So I always buy pink ones. Um, this model was um, actually when I first bought my rechargeable one, um, the one that looked like this one I just used, that was $90. This model was 50 bucks. Okay, so just to let you know, and this is this is not the kind of model that you see all the people with the big plumes. Now, there's called cloud chasers, those people, and they're the ones that enter all the competitions and do all of that. You don't have to do that. You can just simply use it as an alternative. Okay, so there's a lot to it though. Well, when I bought my big one here, my third generation. The, the guy in the shop went, oh, you've, you've ate before, la, 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 oh, I know what I'm doing, and then I had to go back into the shop and ask him how to show me how to do it, because the instructions are seriously on another level. So I think what's important, um, and when I've linked in with our local um, shop now, is that they're giving the right information, and they say, actually, we don't let anybody leave the shop without setting them up, making sure that they're on the right nicotine level. So I think what's important for us as health professionals is that we're working alongside this is going to be the future whether we like it or not, but we need to make sure we're all giving out the same guidelines and that, that our vaping shops have the right advice and they know about the nicotine levels. And this is Mushroom Cloud. Their e-juices are made in New Zealand. They are regulated, okay? So I put a menu on each of um, your tables to give you a bit of an idea of what they do. And these are the information sheets that they give out, okay? We're also working with them so that they have the cards for our local quit service so that we're able to support one another so that the local quit service can still deal with the habitual and routine issues that go alongside with the smoking. Okay? So this one, if you don't mind, I'm, I might come round and do a little bit of this because I want you to notice the flavour difference. Now this flavour is um, the tobacco flavour, one where they recommend you start. If you're trying to transfer from smoking to this, again, these have got not got any nicotine in, and like Yolanda said, um, passive vaping is from this little bit, no one's gonna keel over, okay? Oh, but if you want to leave it, okay. Right, now, the way you do it, which again, I'm gonna have a lesson on, you actually have to take a deep breath in before you press the button. Now, first of all, listen, so normally it makes like a cracky sound. Right? See? So this is your third generation vape. Right, now this is the one I needed the instruction from because it comes in two, two different instruction manuals and there's a battery and then the other bit and this and coils and, and like she was saying, did anyone just sit there going, oh, she's losing me? Yeah, I was, and the instructions were just... Now, first of all, safety, um, these products you can't just switch on, okay? So children can't just switch this on and children see and do, as we all know, and that's the, the worry with smoking and the worry with like, uptaking like this and it being a gateway. But you have to press this five times before it actually even switches on, okay? Okay, well, I've got it on 45 watts so that we get a big bloom with this one. And these are the ones where you can alter the wattage, and again, it gets really confusing, so I've got them set up for me. Because the first time I used it, it burnt my mouth, actually, because it was too high, and I didn't know enough about it. So it's really, really important that people are gonna use these. Um, I think, ideally, they get like a starter. They actually do provide starter kits. There's no way that a vape shop would ever give this to a first-time vape. Do you mean it burned? It was too hot. Yeah. Also, this. Yeah. You know how I showed on the video that they were it heats depending on the on the wattage and how it heated the coil. I didn't know anything about this, and I just thought it's like that one. And you pressed the button and sucked it in. Ooh, and it wasn't good. Okay, so hopefully I won't embarrass myself. I'm used to that. Okay. Like I said, these bottles here. This is your e juice. Um, and they do have the safety features, okay? Do you remember when people smoked, though? There was a big issue, especially in the 70s, 80s, about matches and nighters, weren't they? Kids getting hold of them. Um, my mum would 
kill me before I can shoot her. I was telling this. My brother burnt a whole two cornfields down next to our house, and my dad smoked, and he got the matches. Two whole crops. Oh <laughs> so talking about safety, there are always safety issues with any of these. You know, getting hold of, of those products that aren't exactly good for all the children either. Now they do have the safety lids on, and I definitely agree that these products need to be regulated, and that's what the ministry is currently working on now. But these ones are made and are regulated. Mushroom powder ones are some of the them, but they are okay. Um, it has to for nicotine. Now at the moment, the way they're getting around it is they add nicotine in the liquid for free. So you're not actually <laughs> buying the liquid, so that's how they get around the regulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not selling it, they're giving it to you for free. I haven't put them out there. So they add it in the top that's for you and they measure it, okay? And that's how they get around it. It could be called grooming. Sorry? It could be called grooming. Grooming. <laughs> yeah. Quite busy, isn't it? But we know this is going on. So we were talking about poisoning. Um, we've never heard of death by patches, have we, because of the nicotine levels. Nicotine, for it to be toxic to a human, you have to have two grams of it. Two grams of nicotine is toxic. So when you're talking, we're talking about 18 milligrams is what most 20 a day smokers are on. And if you're a hardcore smoker, probably 24. You know, it's quite unlikely. And what's the main side effect of, of nicotine overdose? Yeah. Nausea. Yeah. Yeah, and they know that it's not pleasant. Oh, great, I'm going to make myself sick every day. Yay! You know, they're not going to do that, they're going to lower their levels. So, they come in all wonderful things. I, the one thing I don't like is I don't like the flavours, the Sprite, the bubblegum, the Red Bull, because to me that is marketed for kids. So, I would like to see that regulated. But they do that with alcohol, don't they? They do. And I hate that. Mm. It doesn't go away. Alka Pops. Yeah, I was from the Alka Pop generation. They call in the UK they're actually called Alka Pops. That's horrendous, isn't it? Okay, so useful facts to remember. They start from twenty to five hundred dollars. Okay? These are expensive bits of kit. You have to buy the battery separately with some of them. So I, this was a hundred dollars and then they went, oh, and there's another ten bucks. Oh, and then there's that. Okay. But vaping costs ten to twenty dollars a week including your juice and your coils which you need to change less frequently the more expensive model you get if you look at a 20 a day smoker currently spends 175 dollars a week wow what a saving so we've all talked about the health but actually when i ask about motivating um, people and what their motivation in wanganui it's on par health and money we're from a very very low socioeconomic area and a lot of people don't care about their health, but they care about the money, okay? So, that's a biggie there for a lot of families. 15 mil of e-juice lasts approximately four to five days and costs between six and eight dollars. So it really, really isn't a massive, massive um, cost. So like I said, the e-juice called RY4 is a great transition juice. I can't stress enough that I'm not here promoting vaping, I'm promoting what's going to work. And in the last couple of years, UK now are, have the second lowest prevalence rates because of vaping after Sweden. That's pretty amazing, really. Okay. So, don't buy cheap models, do your research. That would be the key message I would say to people. At the moment, $2 shops are selling these products. That's a no-go. When you see all of the scary pictures, that's because they've used a cheap model. If you buy a cheap, a cheap crappy car, it's likely to do something nasty, okay? It's the same with anything in life. Make sure the battery's safe. So using the right battery, how people store their batteries. So people need to bear that in mind and, and follow the instructions. So if it says you need to change it every year or every six months, then follow it. Mechanical models are not good for beginners it's because they don't have safety features on and this is where often things go wrong and you see the explosions. They're called, um, not when they were, I was like, what? These are the ones where you can pick your own coil. I don't know if you guys have been into your vape shops. You can, it's very, there's so much to it, there really is. You can buy and make your own coils. You can swap your atomizers and your batteries round. You can completely customise them. These aren't recommended for beginners. We're talking really models like this. Okay. Make sure you clean uh, regularly and replace the coil when necessary. Again, the coil, it will taste like Bernie when 
when the coil needs re um, replacing and you can actually open it up and you can see that the coil is beginning to burn. So you should never actually keep the e-liquid, which you can see in here, you should never actually keep that e-liquid in there. So if you're not going to use it every day. So you know how I said some people might take it to the pub with them on a weekend? If that was the case, they'd need to empty that juice and then refill it. You're not supposed to keep the juice in it because it damages the coil. Okay. Avoid cheap juice. It's really, really important. Now, cheap juice isn't just good, bad for us. It's bad for the environment as well. So a lot of the chemicals are actually banned in this country um, for, from the cheaper shops. So just bear that in mind. It's... it's and quite green, protect the planet as well as the people. Um, so avoiding cheap juice. I'm going to end with a funny. Have I got time? Yeah, we've got two minutes. Two minutes. Oh, well, tell me when to switch it off. I just thought this was really fun. You think you know much? <laughs> but you have much to learn. Mind people that vape, but there's just this big little culture now that's built up around it. Like loads of people being like, yeah, raw, you're so cloudy. It um, looks cool. Uh, <laughs> that's debatable. I don't even really know how to smoke. Didn't give in to peer pressure. Yeah. But smoking is bad. I did heroin. It's, it's very futuristic. Schleek. Yeah, it's Too cool time. for the people who use them. It looks like a sex toy that I don't know how to use. It's like one of those pens that has a naked woman in it, but it's missing the yeah. naked woman. <laughs> you have to push a button in. Yeah, it's mm. just there. You know when you're in the dentist? Evil. Just lie the back end. in the chair. The Whee! <laughs> For some reason it looks funnier because you're wearing a beanie and glasses. Sorry internet, hipster overload on screen it all shakes. You're making a ship, it's explosion. <laughs> oh so it is actually cigarette flavoured. That doesn't taste anything like tobacco. Tobacco is gross. It tastes like corn. It smelled like apple and then tasted like arse. I don't, I don't get the fun part. Tastes like a cigarette. Kind of is. Case closed. Okay, I'll go down here and then I'll just... I, I look terrible at this because I can never find the button. Hold on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work and I'm stuck. I'm trying to guess that flavour, man. I'll blow it in your face and see if you like it. It's like popcorn. That has no taste. You can tell I played woodwind instruments <laughs> yeah. as a child. Taking up a position of being like... Lur, lur. Peanut butter and banana tobacco. What? You banana. Why'd you give me bananas? I'm allergic to peanuts. That's interesting. Oh. That looks like iodine. This is the worst one. Oh, I am so light headed right now. Bordering on like, you know, kind of tipsy. You'd swear we were getting high. We're not. <laughs> yeah. We're just giddy. Yeah, I can't taste anything anymore because we've had so many. When you hover above it and go, then it, yeah. Blackcurrant. <laughs> Don't come out of the end of it. Blackcurrant and licorice. Oh, blackcurrant, I was so close. In my brain, but it's not like saying my it with my words. You know them basset sweets? My granny once gave me them when I was younger and I smelled them and just vomited into the bag. That's how much I hate licorice. And what back. happens if I get all of the pens and hold them all down at once and suck it all in? Oh my God. The only people I ever see buying licorice are old. And hipsters, and hipsters. Don't forget the hipsters. It's a bad mention I have herpes. <laughs> <coughs> Candy floss or something? It's like Mr. Frosty. Ooh. 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 Guys, what happened? That smoke didn't come out of me. Yeah. What happens when it doesn't come out of me? I didn't know what this is, now it's going to me. Slush lemon lime. That does not look like it should be good for you. It looks like sludge. It's marketed to kids. That's what it looks like. Make it be kind of dizzy. <laughs> if you breathe it in real deep, it doesn't come back out. Isn't that romantic? No. What's the proper cool way to hold it? Like a teacher with a pen, I feel, who's just like, who threw this? I'd rather be in a smoking area in a nightclub eating a lime than smoking one of these. <laughs> hey, where are you from? And now people are taking up vaping without previously having smoked. You not the old cigarettes, because you want to live a bit longer, fair play to you. Don't get up on your high horse, because you smoke a little tube. That's the problem that, that vaping has, that smoking uh, had like cool people who smoked. Like Clint Eastwood, who was like, what's up? Gateway drug. Cigarettes. That's a gateway drug to f loneliness. Mm -hmm.